First Reborn, Episode 9, Sunday, Bloody Sunday. This episode was actually pretty cool because we got a ton of crazy name drops, or just reveals, in this episode. So, pretty much of just the names that were kind of surprising to see. We got Matt, who is now, like, this director who's, like, putting people under, like, this weird mind control at the facility Carlos is at. We got Renee, who is somehow alive. I don't even know what that means, but he is. Micah has officially been announced, and he's actually revealed as the leader of the Hero Truthers. And he's, of course, with Carlos, which, you know, it's Hero, so of course they're doing something is going to end up bringing all these people together by episode 13. But, you know, Micah is in this weird little compound. Um, Taylor is officially with the Hero Truthers now. And there's someone else. There's some. I'm probably going to get to it. I'll probably remember as I'm going through the story of this episode. But a lot of crazy stuff in this one happened. Um, I thought of the Hero Truthers. I thought we were going to see Mohinder when those people started to get out of the truck. I was like, are they going to bring Mohinder back? And he actually lived. But unfortunately, that was not the case. But we do get Taylor with the Hero Truthers. She's going to help them. They're going to work together to take out her mother, who in this episode seemed way more evil than she has the entire series when she was just in that one little scene when she's cutting up the venison. And she's like, you know, she pushes the guy like, you, you know, she said something very specific. It wasn't like destroying it. was like you're desecrating it or something weird like that. And so in that one scene, she seemed more evil than she has the entire series, which I thought was really weird. But I'm like, something about that. It wasn't even the blood on her hands and she's just drinking wine. It was just something about that seemed a bit more visceral than anything she'd done. I guess because she was literally cutting up um, an animal that she just shot. Like, I'm just going to kill this thing for nothing. And then... It was a really weird thing to have, like, just come, like, full circle by the end. And she's like, I hope you like venison uh, to Tommy at the end. Like, that was just a weird thing to have happen to me. Like, it was random, but it definitely worked to just make her weird and evil to me. So I, I certainly enjoyed that. But I think this was a fun episode. Um, Miko was in this episode at the end, which I guess I'll talk about that first because it was the la very last scene. And there's really not much I can guess outside of the promo where Tommy actually takes Erica to the future. So that might be how they get Miko. But obviously that brings up an enormous question as to how in the world she ends up there. So, like, she beat her evil clone and then poof, she becomes a real person again, but she sent, I think it was like 7,500 and something years in the future. So I'm not 100% sure how that happened, but I want an answer. She's real, so that does bring her back. Um, I do believe they actually showed Ren in, like, a tiny little scene. He was, like, getting on, trying to get on uh, every now and that was pretty much it. But he was actually in this episode for that one little piece. And then we had a lot of crazy stuff going on. Like, the Carlos stuff was really insane. That was a really big focus this episode, where that was basically the other half of the story. There were three going on, but it was, like, the stuff going on with Noah and Tommy, and then mostly Tommy, for sure. He had, like, some really big stuff happened in this one and then the other half was basically Carlos the guy he was with and I don't care because that guy was an evil person and he's not even that important of an evil villain so I don't even care that much about him so I didn't bother learning his name but he gets taken out um fortunately for Carlos he wasn't totally screwed over because I still think it was stupid that he just drank that thing whatever it was I still don't understand how that because it knocked him out and it made it, his DNA register as Nevo. So it just makes me wonder, like, what in the world was that? Because it clearly wasn't just like, oh, drink some of my blood and then, you know, you got some of my blood in your mouth. Which I would think would register. Because all they did, it's not like they did anything special. It was like cotton swab and then they just stuck it into a machine. He could have just, like, eaten a piece of bread and spit it. That would have been so nasty. But he could have just eaten a piece of bread and be like, here, Carlos, eat this. And that would have been the same thing, like, boom, all oh, his DNA's right there. But either way, that was a really cool uh, part of this episode. And I don't know why they were playing around with this as if we couldn't figure it out, but Matt being the director, um, I like the way they shot it because it was kind of weird how they were doing it where they wouldn't show his face. But it's like he was in the last episode, or I guess, I guess technically it was the episode before last. I can't even remember because it was like, it was either the end of part one or like the very beginning of part two of them in the past but he was like just there it's like i i know exactly who this is 
they talk about him getting into people's minds and stuff. So I'm like, okay, I, I know it's going to be Matt. And of course it is. They, you know, they do the pan up and I'm like, this isn't a reveal. I'm not dumb. And he was in the last episode. If it wasn't, honestly, if he wasn't in the other episode, it would have been a much bigger reveal because I wouldn't have remembered his voice and I wouldn't have been 100% sure that that was him. And, you know, the whole mind control thing, like, they really just say he has, you know, he gets into your head, like, okay, anyone could do that. But the fact that they kind of just had him in an episode was why it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, the fact that he's, like, this big director now is very different, though, because he was, like, one of the good guys before. And that's the biggest, you know, twist about his whole character. The stuff they have beforehand, I feel like that could easily be played off where... <clears throat> he didn't really know what was happening as far as what Erica was really planning to do with the future and all that stuff. So it was like, all right, Noah, you know, let me get this information out of you. But at the same time, he knew that they were looking for the kids. So he he really became like a villain in this, which is really interesting. I actually like that about his character because he was a cop. He was just a cop and, you know, he was affected. You know, I, re I still remember like the, his first episode... He was just a cop, and oddly enough, someone put him under mind control, and I don't know why this is in my head, but I remember the person told him, like, go to a donut shop and eat some donuts on break or something, and one of his buddies found him and was like, you're just like Walker Stereotype right now. And I don't know why I remember that, but I do. And seeing him go from that character to, like, the righteous good guy cop character to being the overlord of this crazy evil facility like brainwashing everyone on a very huge scale like i love the way they do it though because i don't remember like with the series being the original series being so long ago i don't remember everyone's you know the extent of everyone's powers like i don't remember him being able to like really dive into people's heads and get them to basically relive situations all i remember is that he could read minds so this is like it, I mean, it could have been in the old series, and I just don't remember. But it felt like a really big step for his powers, which I thought was cool, because he still technically reads people's minds. He's not making them do anything like I thought, but he kind of messes with them and forces them. You know, he's trying to read their minds so much, and they kind of block out. Like, is this one important thing that they keep blocking out, and that's what ends up coming to the forefront. So I thought that was really cool. It's like, that's actually pretty sweet to see that happen. And Carlos was really affected. Um, the guy who was working with, I must, I guess he actually did kill himself. It was very confusing how they did that because they have this whole thing there, but he didn't actually have a gun because they showed it with Carlos where there wasn't actually a gun there. And the other guy's ability, it wasn't like he made things, you know, appear out of nowhere. So it was really confusing because I'm like, okay, the gun wasn't there, which they clearly showed with the Carlos stuff. But after that scene, they definitely made it seem like he killed himself because there was like blood and everything and he was dead so i'm like i don't understand how that was working that was very confusing to me and i don't see why they would have done that as like a weird trick and then it's like oh he's not dead it's not like he's a main character no one would really care that much but it was very confusing because i'm like that's i'm pretty sure i wasn't seeing that wrong when it came back from commercial like there was blood and stuff um it was just weird so i was like i don't understand how that's taking place um, there, I'm, I feel like they actually flat out rolled out a body, but I, I could be wrong on that, I'm trying to remember it right, but the fact that there was definitely blood, or there was some random red stuff, which it was walls lined with plastic for that very reason for people killing themselves, it just seems so weird, like where did the gun come from if he actually died? And then they had the whole machine gun thing, which was really awesome, I love that scene with Carlos where it was like him in the room, but they'd switch between him um, in like the yellow outfit, um, with no gun, then they'd have him with a machine gun, then they'd have him in the army outfit with no gun, and then he'd be in the actual location with a gun, then he'd, they'd switch it and he'd be in like the yellow outfit with no gun in the location. I just love the way that they edited that, because it was like, probably 20 good cuts there, but it was, it worked really well, because it was just like constantly rotating the location and the costume, and like the gun in and out, it's like him with the, you know, him full army, him you know, current actual state with no gun and regular uniform. It was just really cool. I was like, that's actually very awesome. And we also got to get like a bit of a reveal that 
not only was he in like this really crazy situation, which we found a little bit about in the flashback episodes, but he actually was scared. Like he just wasn't even fighting. And he pretty much did nothing. He was there and people were dying around him. And he was basically freaking out and didn't want to get killed off. And that's really what took place. It wasn't even like, oh, she saved us. And, you know, we have to say that it was me because she's an Evo. It's the fact that he was actually just flat out scared to begin with. He wasn't even fighting. And that made sense now um, when he was like, oh, I'm getting this medal for something that I didn't do. And it makes sense way more now when she's like, you know, if you felt like you're getting a medal for something you don't deserve, then live up to it. Because before it was like, just, you know, I'll just live up to the potential because you are a good person. You just couldn't save those people like I could. And now it makes way more sense that she was saying in that way because he actually wasn't doing anything to even fight. Like, he was just scared and he didn't want to die, which makes sense. I mean, it's not like I'm going to be like, I would have totally run out there and done all that. But it makes sense why she said that a little bit more now. So I enjoyed that for sure. Um, Matt getting that information, I don't know if that's going to... I mean, the only thing that could really do is lead to Angela, I feel. And she probably... I'm sure she wouldn't give up her granddaughter. So... Or, I guess, great-granddaughter. Yeah. So that probably won't lead to anywhere too important for Matt and, you know, Renatus in general. But... It was still really cool. Like, I certainly enjoyed that portion of the episode. Um, Tommy's storyline was, without a doubt, the coolest thing in this episode because, you know, we get Tommy... Once again, I have to bring this up. Did the girl break up with that dude? And I just don't remember that scene because I swear that that never happened. And they're just, like, making out and stuff. And I'm like, what in the world happened? Did they cut a scene out of the hospital episode? Because I feel like that's the only reason... <laughs> that that could have happened. They went for that blood, and that guy vanished. That blood came in, and that other actor who was Emily's boyfriend just vanished. That's what happened in that episode. And it's just like, it's not, did I miss something? I really need to know if I missed something, because I felt like that just... I see every time they kiss, I'm just like, is he going to show up and be mad at them, or did something happen that I just don't remember? Because it just it annoys me every time I see it. Like, I'm pretty sure they didn't have any scenes where that happened and then she's just like waking up with Tommy and it's like is that not gonna come up as an issue or even a form of dialogue even if you like someone it's gonna be you're gonna be like hey don't you have a boyfriend like is this gonna be crazy or something like it, someone would say something and it's just been nothing so I either I missed something or they just completely forgot to write that in or maybe they really did delete a scene that probably should have been in there not even important but it just bugs me every time I see it like that that's gonna have an effect because that kid was gonna rat Tommy out in the first you know I think the first episode and then something crazy would have to happen to stop him beforehand but I don't think they did like a memory wipe on him or anything like that so I don't know either way moving past it his stuff was pretty amazing he finds out you know we get him kind of like he was in the past he finds out all the info here on Nakamura is his dad is a sister he's never met he has to save the future plain and simple he's dealing with his things then we find out that not only do Luke and Melinda end up running into Tommy and Emily but they run into him during a very interesting point where we lose the guy who has like all the pennies whose name is apparently Casper or something like that which I had no idea uh, that really sucked I thought for sure that Tommy would actually jump back in time and kind of stop it and help him so it does suck that that didn't happen, because I like that guy. Um, the most that we got of him was in like the flashbacks, where he was actually helping Noah. But I liked him, and I thought for sure that... Um, I guess there has to be a specific penny that he's never used, or something weird like that. Because I thought that the woman, and I of course can't remember her name, I could have sworn that she picked up like the penny that he wanted her to pick up. I thought she picked it up when it like got near her boot and then it seemed like nothing happened but apparently that's not the case because when that first happened um i guess i didn't see it like i thought i saw it but i was like oh does that mean that she has some sort of weird latent ability too that she never knew about which i thought would have been awesome because when she picked it up i was like oh her memory should be gone but nothing happened so she has you know a power and then that didn't happen i'm like well did she just 
does it have to be like a specific penny then? Which I never thought was the case because I thought that's why he like dropped all those pennies. It's like, oh, just if she touches a penny, memory's gone. But then when he was talking to her, it seemed like he had to be very specific and say like, hey, and kind of get them to think about, you know, that important thing. And that's what would allow them to uh, lose that memory, which I don't know that's probably totally wrong but I really thought she picked up that painting so once again I see stuff and I'm like I'm pretty sure I saw that exactly the way I saw it but which we've had before we had it in the other episode where he rolled that penny towards the guard when he was helping out Noah and the guy just picked it up and it was like poof memory gone so I don't know exactly what happened there but it ended up being a very awesome scene with Tommy actually using um, slow motion for the first time or at least I I can't I couldn't tell if it was slow motion or if it was a hundred percent like a dead stop but it looked like it was very very slow motion because it looked like the bullet was still moving like just a tiny bit and it was pretty sweet like it was a nice little scene goes into slow motion um Luke is actually about to kill his wife and she's about to kill Emily and then Melinda's in the background like she you know, she was trying to help, and then, of course, everything kind of went off a little too early, so she couldn't really do anything then. And it was just insanity. Like, he's dead on... We got a guy dead on the ground, buttload of and pennies just all over the place. So he moves the bullet, which I thought for sure he was just going to teleport the bullet somewhere, which I thought would have looked cool because I love the effect so much. I just kind of wanted him to see it just go like... and just make it disappear again. But, you know, he moves the bullet. He moves, like, Luke's heat wave I guess you know towards the ice cream and he actually does save Luke's wife and she ends up with Renatus now at the end I don't understand how they were tracking them or what was the case there but now she's gonna be with them her and Luke are gonna have another confrontation which considering he actually was gonna make you know he, he made the final move to take her down and just was stopped because of Tommy I don't see them really talking it out too much the next time around. Like, it's going to be, you know, you were going to kill that girl for no good reason. And, yeah, I was going to take you down to try to save someone else's life who isn't going to go on to hurt a bunch of other, you know, innocent people. So they probably won't be talking it out too much uh, in the next time they have a confrontation. But I love this one. Uh, great use of Tommy having the slow motion and... It was just cool because we don't we hadn't really seen that in this series and that was always one of my favorite things in the original when Hero would do the slow motion and they would have they had a lot of effects going into that stuff because I remember I saw some special thing for the original series some of it would be CG and then other stuff would be like live action some of the people would just be still um, there was something I I remember hearing where it was like they would actually have like real papers floating in the air because they would have stuff like on wires and they just bend the paper and like basically put you know the invisible like tv wires through them and keep everything still and basically whatever position it was in you know that's what it would look like on the show and it was really cool and i'm sure it was the same thing here like some stuff was actually there and some stuff wasn't some people uh may have been gotten they got pictures of them all in like still positions maybe i don't know how all the slow motion <laughs> effects work i don't do effects work but it was really cool nice to see that um, Tommy gets himself and Emily out of there, um, Luke takes off, I don't know what's gonna happen with Melinda, cause Luke took off after his wife, and then the cops came, she went out, you know, down the alley, and he took off down the street, cause of course, it's like, oh crap, you know, the cops are coming, I'm out of here, he didn't get in the car, he just went directly down the street and took off, so I'm assuming Melinda's probably just gonna run out the back, and then she'll be fine as well, cause she's in the promo, it's not like she was in jail or anything, so... I think everything's going to end up turning out totally fine for her. She just got out and then they met up again. But this was, this was a fun episode. A, a lot of cool moments. Uh, Quentin in this episode is like, you know, he reveals himself to Noah as being like this new timeline villain. He's the one who, he's the one thing that really changed. And I like it personally. Like I read an article before I was doing it and someone thought it was like kind of lazy and stuff. Um... And they said, like, it was because it went against his whole character, but I, that's kind of why I like it, because as much as he was, like, obviously the comic relief person, it was driven, his whole motive was driven to save his sister, and he never had to save his sister because it happened in the past. Like, when he saved Erica in the past, she let him, 
you know, meet her sister, and she basically convinced him, like, this is what's happening, and this is why we needed to do this and do that, and, you know, he's on board, he's been convinced, based on having all the facts and everything in this alternate timeline, where his drive wasn't, oh, you're the people that kidnapped my sister, he didn't have that anymore, that was never, he didn't have that drive, there was nothing there, so, he basically just worked for the company, and it was as simple as that. And like I like that twist. I actually personally I enjoy. It. it sucks. I mentioned this before. It sucks that he's a villain now though, because he got killed by his own sister in the initial timeline, and now he's a villain, and he'll probably have to get killed off again. So it's kind of tragic for him in a weird sense. But it was admittedly it was kind of cool seeing him and his sister working together. To be totally honest, because they were like an evil duo. I was like that was actually kind of cool. But it still sucks that he's a villain now. I was like, but that was pretty sweet. She wasn't like. It didn't seem like she was under control as much either. She didn't seem like she didn't seem like she was as much under Erica's control like she was in the initial timeline where she was like completely broken down and destroyed and forced to do this, you know, for all these years. And now she's like a mute, just evil villain. She was still herself, but she, you know, she was just a part of the plan. I was like that. That was another little thing that changed, but I actually like that because it showed that with them being together and with Erica not needing to, you know, force her to do something because her brother was there to support her, it kind of came out a little bit better for her and him overall, I guess, because even though he's a villain, he's still alive. And as far as, you know, his character is concerned, it's kind of better for him, even though he's, you know, a bad guy now. And it's like, mm, can't really support him and what he's doing because it's kind of dumb to me, like, stopping um, this person from who can obviously save everyone, stopping them. I, I don't know, but I did enjoy this episode. I'm really looking forward to this answer about Miko and how she got sent to the future. Looking forward to the insane answer of how Renee survived, because wiping someone's ability does not translate into surviving being shot in the heart. I want to know what happened there. I don't know if maybe someone else has kind of Melinda's ability, I guess it would be like to bring people back. But either way, I'm looking forward to an answer to that. I'm certainly looking forward to uh, Renee and Noah meeting up again, because he's going to be like, I killed you. You're like, you know, one of his best friends from the original series. And it's like, holy crap, how are you alive? And I, I would assume that everything else, unless that was another butterfly that changed somehow, which wouldn't make any sense, because the whole memory wipe thing still happened to Noah. So that wouldn't be something that changed. Everything is the same except for Quentin and his sister. So I want an answer on how he survived. I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing Mika be there. Considering he's at the the weird place or whatever where people see whatever, I feel like we might get to see Ali Larder, who played his mother um, in the original series. We might actually get to see her make a random cameo as his sort of hallucination. Maybe his father as well. But that would be kind of cool if they did. Then it was like, hey, we need you guys for like a couple minutes. Boom, here's a little cameo for these other, you know, older characters as well. Because everyone's kind of just vanished. Like, there's like zero explanation for what happened with any single character in the entire series. Except for Claire, Mohinder, and the couple of other people that we've actually seen and what they're doing. Everyone else is like, meh, they're gone. Nathan lost that kid. I don't know how that happened. I'm pretty sure he was alive in season four. Could be wrong. Really don't remember. But, you know, it, it's, it would be cool to just get that little cameo and stuff. Um, like I said, looking forward in general to them kind of blending the storylines together because now we have sort of our, you know, wrestler Batman character. He's going to be meeting up with the hero truthers. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm actually just looking forward to how he even gets out of that, because that was just a crazy situation he was in. He actually got to his nephew. I thought the father was killed I, when he was shot. I thought he died. But he gets to both of them, and is like, we gotta get out of here. And then he can't rescue them. He has them, like, right there. The kid's seeing his father in the Elbengendor costume and everything. Who knows what the, you know, the Padre was seeing. But it's like he, he everyone's under this crazy control. It's like, that. that's like the weirdest sense of failure like he was right there and all they would have had to do is run because everything was wide open like everyone's under this weird mind control where it's like oh it's so nice and happy here it was just really weird like everyone's basically talking to themselves and they don't even realize it so i love that scene 
where he was just so close. Also a nice cool little action moment where he beat up uh, the first guy. But then he just got surrounded and they tased the crap out of him. So now that he's reliving this crazy memory, who knows how that's going to play out for him, how he'll break out of that you know, crazy little spell. Maybe he'll actually end up, um, if the guy didn't die, it's like I said, I don't know. Based on how they showed it, I was very confused. And then the Carlos scene happened and he didn't have a gun. I don't know. But if I saw that really, really wrong, then he would probably be able to help if somehow he wasn't under complete control with super strength, maybe super mental strength as well i don't know but i'm looking forward to the next episode can't wait to see what they talk about with the future and of course it would be very interesting if it's like oh we also happen to go seven thousand years in the future and poof hey there's miko so that'll probably happen which i would kind of hate because that would be so stupid and unbelievably like deus ex machina type of thing where it's like we went the perfect amount of time to find miko who was sent seven thousand years in the future when this thing is supposed to happen in like a year or something like less than a year the earth is basically supposed to be wiped out and then it's like we jump seven thousand four hundred and fifty nine years in the future perfectly month and everything and there's miko but however they do it i'm looking forward to it of course i want to know what you guys thought about this episode so please comment below let me know your favorite parts your least favorite parts and they had a couple of reveals in this episode, the Hero Truther stuff, mostly uh, the Renee thing and the fact that Mika was like the leader, which I thought was pretty interesting because he was like the youngest person out of the people that we even saw, um, Mika or Micah, I guess Micah, um, is still the youngest person. So I thought that was actually kind of cool that he was the leader, despite, especially with Renee there, because he even worked for excuse me, like Renatus and the initial company, which I totally forgot the name of because they've been saying Renatus now. But, like, I, don't, I don't know. I, I want to know what you guys think was the coolest reveal. The mad thing really wasn't a reveal whatsoever in this episode, I guess. But, you know, there are just a couple of really cool moments. And I guess technically the hero truth the thing is the only reveal. But, like, as far as, like, the big moments that happen, like, Tommy actually, you know, them showing us his... Um, manipulation of stopping time, uh, the hero truther scene in general, which kind of threw a big surprise my way when they did, you know, it was her mother. I really thought it was her, like, oh, she tricked her, which with it being Erica as a character, I was like, that could easily happen. I totally believed it because she's not an idiot, so I'd be like, yeah, she totally had someone hack into her daughter's computer, sent her a fake message, boom, she tricked her and got in and you know, kidnapped her and tried to get whatever extra info she could get. But as far as the reveals that happened, whether it was, you know, new powers being displayed or old powers being displayed by new characters in Tommy's case, um, the Matt reveal, maybe just the compound in general and seeing exactly what was going on there would be the bigger, you know, the better reveal to choose from. But I want to know your favorites. Um, mine has to be the fact that Renee is alive because it brings up the craziest question. Um, actually, it would probably be the fact that Miko's alive. That's the biggest reveal for me, because she wasn't even a real character, so it's, now she's real again, and she was sent in the future, and I guess it's just the fact that, you know, Hero was the person that was unleashed, so that that's kind of why she was, um, shot into the future, because of the whole time travel thing, and maybe it's sheer coincidence and stuff, and maybe that's where she's gonna end up going, uh, she's gonna end up being where all those random items were sent, as well as those couple of people from that episode. We might actually see them in the future now, and wherever they ended up, they're just poof in the future, which I guess was an okay choice, because they would prefer to live in a crazy, crappy future with, you know, whatever supplies, rather than just get shot up in the past. But we might actually get to see whatever sort of weird future compound that they're making. That literally just occurred to me like she may have been sent to the same future because Hero was never technically controlling his ability and if that's the case then I would assume just out of just random time travel she would be sent exactly where maybe not the same location obviously because there was just nothing around her but maybe uh same time to where all those items and those couple of people were sent as well but I want to know your favorite reveal sorry I did that random rambling thing at the end there it just popped into my head so I had to put that out there but i do want to know what you guys think i've rambled a lot in this one so please comment below let me know and thanks for watching